conditions, they can be absolutely exhilarating as you're thinking about this opportunity to lead a church. Um, but I want to remind you as, as we think about stepping into the transition, accepting the call, moving if you're moving, but just that transition out of what you're doing now, a move or not, and into what you're going to be doing leading a church. It's absolutely exhilarating. And there's a huge but on the end of that statement. But the adrenaline that you feel early on is not enough to carry you through several years of leading the church during the transition phase. And so you're going to need rest. You're going to need to you know, ride that wave of adrenaline and enjoy it, but get rest. And I would say from leaving your old thing and starting your new role as a lead pastor, you need two to four weeks of rest. Um, in my opinion, this should be paid for financially by the incoming by the church you're moving toward or the, the church you're stepping up and being promoted in. And I define rest in four measurable ways. It's relax, a minimum of four to seven days of, of family vacation, you know, unplug, um, no email, that sort of stuff. Recharge physically. What I find is that adrenaline that's been happening for months, potentially through the interview process and everything else um, is a bit crazy and it takes a toll on your body. Most leaders need extra sleep. Um, they've been burning the candle at both ends, which means um, they've not been working out much. Um, they haven't been spending much time outdoors. They've been in meetings. They've been in front of their computer a lot. They're not eating very well. So uh, re uh, relax, recharge, get some solitude, ask us for solitude. And that's essentially plan for stillness and really uh, allow God to speak into you during this time um, and, and find that still quiet voice. Um, and again, you will have Transitions leaderships are probably the most rewarding things you will do in leadership, but they're also the most challenging. And the, the call that God has given you specifically to say yes and to step into that is going to be very important. And so the solitude is going to really affirm that. And the last thing is don't forget that this is for, for almost all of us, this is a together. And ensure your spouse is not just a part of the vacation stuff, but a part of recharging, a part of the solitude. Um, it is possible that the next season of leadership may be as taxing on them or even more taxing on them than it is for you. Um, an example of that would be a pastor who's a pretty sanguine personality and um, they deal with problems, but they can go back into church the next day and work them out in the boardroom, in the, in the meetings and have the conversations. And oftentimes if their spouse is at home, they're dealing with the bad news of the night before, but they don't have the same way of working it all out the next day or the next week or the next month. And so what you can have is two people together in marriage, but with different roles in ministry and different ways of processing um, stress and hurt in ministry. And it can actually feel heavier on the person who isn't employed at the church, the spouse who's not employed than the one who is just because of how they work through those situations. Mm -hmm.